Ladies and gentlemen, good morning, good evening, and good afternoon, and welcome to another special episode of Blank Canvas. This week we'll be discussing with our repeat guest, Mr. Javit Nixon from season one, the topic of false start and what does it mean to have a false start in life, in your projects, in your work? How do we create scenarios for improvement and how do we bounce back from failures? Make sure you mark it in your calendars. This week is a two part episode. So be sure to notify your friends, your colleagues and all those who are listening that next week will be airing be part two of this exciting conversation with Javed. Stay tuned. All right, ladies and gentlemen, good evening, good morning, good afternoon, depending on time of day that you're listening. And welcome to another episode of Blank Canvas, where we speak to creatives about the different facets of creativity. Today we have a repeat guest, <laughs> dare I say the star of season one, um, episode one, Javet Nixon, CEO of Point Global Marketing. Javet, welcome back. Thank you for having me. I was a star, meaning? I mean, <laughs> I, I, I'd say star because it was the breaking of the ice. Nice. And... Uh, we got a lot of good reviews about how we started. I love that. I love yeah, that. Yeah, so definitely the conversation was really iconic for the setting of the tone of Blank Canvas. Nice. Um, and persons gave a lot of good feedback. So, yeah, man. No, I'm happy to, that I was a part of it. Um, congratulations on starting and continuing. Uh, I, I know based on everything that I heard and saw and listened, that it's really impacting a lot of people. So congrats again. Yeah, man. And thank you again for having me. Appreciate it. And on the journey of starting, it ties in very well with our topic for today. Yeah. False start. Yes. You know, um, starting blank canvas was was something that I, I mulled over in my mind a thousand times. Like, am I really going to do this? Am I really going to start talking? Am I really going to come out of my shell? Despite persons may think that I'm a public figure, if, if you will, but I have my own... <laughs> reservations yeah. about how I, I approach certain um, public speaking engagements and right. you know just just the conversations that I had with myself alone would have deterred me right. but there was a, a, a an inner spirit that kept me you know like saying that look this is a thing that is going to make some waves it's, yeah. it serves a purpose and it serves a purpose higher than what you want to achieve today's topic as I'd mentioned, false start. Mm -hmm. So we'll be going through different adages mm -hmm. and uh, you know breaking them down, and, and and I'll be getting your point of view on it. So the first one that we'll start with is never being ready. Right. Starting before you're actually ready. Starting with the bare minimum, if you will, the best thing that you can do at the time. Right. And false start doesn't mean the race is over. Sure. Um, you know, one of the things that uh, a lot of people think is in order to get where you want to go, that you have to have all the resources uh, when you're when you're up front. Up front, yeah. Like, and even some some people think the resource that is needed. I have this minimum resource requirement. Mm -hmm. But invariably, when it comes down to when you're starting something, the minimum resource re required is learning. <laughs> right true because learning is the only thing that is required mm -hmm. at, the, at the start right 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 uh because learning rec means progress <laughs> right mm -hmm. so as far as i'm concerned and how i've always approached anything that i i do even if it's an idea that just came to me is immediately how do i start learning mm -hmm. how do i give myself how do i move myself from the knowledge that i have now right to a different knowledge plane. Right. So for, for me, what what it means is that if you're passionate about it, you start before you're ready. Mm -hmm. Because if you wait until you're ready, it means that you're you're still in your comfort zone. This is something that is it's not pushing you to actually go somewhere and do something different. Right. You're still in the ambit of what you can control. Right. And everything dies in a comfort zone. Everything dies. Yeah. So from for me what learning learning is uncomfortable if if you have ever tried to learn like to become a graphic artist or um, learning another language learning another language yeah. there's this phase in the process that is so uncomfortable yeah. you feel awkward 
If, if you like try to know what you're doing, yeah, a new <laughs> dance move, right. everything that is, you, you, you actually feel stupid. You're like, um, I don't feel comfortable. Right. I feel outside of my comfort zone. Right. And what most people do is they take that feeling of being out of their comfort zone to say, I don't want to do it because I'm gonna look stupid. Right. But or I'm the, not worthy of I, doing this. Yeah. Right. I'm not. I don't have the skill set. Mm-hmm. But the reality is, you're learning, and the reason why you're uncomfortable is because you're learning. And as you learn, you pick up new skills to move forward. Yeah. So the, the, for me, that process of learning is why you should start. Yeah. Because even if it don't work out, you would have moved yourself to a different plane. Mm-hmm. You would have, you would have, as they, they call it in economics, you'd have gone to a different utility a square. Mm-hmm, <laughs> you mm-hmm, know, mm-hmm. in the utility theory, they said everybody have these these square. With, it's, it's about consumption, but I'm applying it in a creative way. Yeah. Um, you have these different points of consumption that you moved in your life based on what your income level is. But the truth is, you have these different points of knowledge that you move through in your life as well. Right. Based on where you are in life. Mm-hmm. You know, where you are in life is like a stepping stone f- for something else. Right. So as you increase knowledge, you access greater connections because you are now able to connect dots that you weren't able to connect at a lower level. Of it, the knowledge gap. So the learning part of it becomes so important. That's why you should start. Why is it that, and I'm sure you've tutored, counseled, advised many persons coming up in business, starting other projects, um, and our creatives just trying to find their way. What is the fear of learning? Like, why is there a, a resistance to opening your eyes to something new? And just grabbing it by the horns. The truth is most people don't like to, to, to look like they're amateurs. Everybody wants to be an expert. <laughs> but even the greatest experts were once amateurs. Right. Um, so a, a lot of people, they want to, even if you see why Instagram has become so corrosive for the development of business and entrepreneurship, is because everybody is pretending to know to be everything. An expert. And mm-hmm. to be an expert. Mm-hmm. So is this feeling that I need to be an expert to start. I need to know all the answers to start. When in reality, nobody does. And even if you're an expert, you still have blind spots. Of course. You still have things that you have to learn. Of course. Learning is constant, especially in an environment like like we're operating now. And you mentioned Instagram and having a conversation at another point. Instagram is is essentially a highlight reel. Mm Mm-hmm. You don't see the missed shots. Yep. You don't see the stumbles. Yeah, yeah. You don't see the failures, the falls. You only see the finished product of that made shot, that 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 glamour image, and that's you what don't people even, hold on to. Yeah, you don't even see the nuances in the story. Right. And I tell you, the highlight reel, you know, in any career, you don't get most of the, the, the lessons from the highlights. True. That's what people don't realize. True. What, even if you look at the most successful point in your life, mm-hmm. when you think, oh, I have achieved something, mm-hmm. like, for example, a, a good one is what people can relate to is education. Mm-hmm. People feel like, oh, the point of my graduation day is when I have hit this achievement that I need to post the shot to say, <laughs> hey, I have the degree. Right. <laughs> right? But if you think about the process, you know, the process is incremental. Uh-huh. When you started on day one to do your degree or your program or whatever, on day two, you will know more than you knew on day one. Mm-hmm. And the point at which you graduate is not the point of maximum achievement. Right. It's, uh, it's actually, for most people, the, the point of minimum achievement because you just took one more step to get to that, yeah, right? Yeah. And you had a whole journey in between that gave you the lessons that you were supposed to learn, mm-hmm. right? So in year two, you made a friendship and a connection that maybe stayed with you your whole life. Right. In year th- three, uh, uh, you were introduced to a topic that gave you an idea for a business um, that you will start maybe 10 years in the future. Mm-hmm. But you don't have the ability to see the entire trajectory. You don't have the ability to see the entire timeline. Yeah. So you undervalue those in-between spaces. Right, 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 which right. in reality, it's in the in-between. It's in the journey that actual the, the fullness of what you're supposed to be accomplishing happens. Right. The graduation is just like a cherry on, on top. The, top. Yeah, the yeah. cake don't bake. Yeah. The knowledge <laughs> done in the head. Mm-hmm. Right? This is just the this is just the thing that says, hey, he, he, here he, he, we want to commemorate this this this, this, this moment. This moment. Yeah, yeah. So that snapshot is actually not really 
in a real way. It's not the thing. It's not the thing. Yeah. We are people are making it the thing when it's not the thing. Mm-hmm. The thing is everything that has happened in between in the in-between spaces. Yeah. Until they got to that point. That's the thing. That's the thing that you should what I call it is being present for. Those are the things you should be present for. It's the thing that most people want to run away. Mm-hmm. Even even people know better. Yeah. Because they are difficult. Jesus. I have to go, have to go write the document here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I have to go figure out this idea. Mm-hmm. Oh, God. I may have another idea in my head. Oh, 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 oh Lord. I have to go edit this. Yeah. Oh, I have to edit this. I don't know the tools fully. Like, I have to go learn that now. I'm stressed. <laughs> <laughs> right? And I'm not seeing how this is going to work. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not seeing the full picture. Yeah. Right? But it's, it's those in between spaces that real, real, Gravy happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the real, the real, the real thing happens in those in between spaces. How would you counsel or coach or or give any pointer to those who are in that that lull space? Right. Um, whether it is creative, creative entrepreneur, or just someone who is 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 looking to try and find that next step. Right. What's your progression you know, chart? I don't recall who said this, um, but it's something that I'm always t- taken to heart. Discipline wins races that motivation will never win. Right? Because most of us want to be motivated. We want to feel like, yo, we have the fire in our belly to do something. Mm-hmm. You have this passion for it. But the reality is motivation can only get you up. Discipline is what make you stay up. Mm-hmm. Right? And if you're doing anything of purpose, if you're doing anything that meaningful, it's not the overnight story that we typically hear. Right? Um, it's not the, oh, this person is the youngest person to ever do that. Mm-hmm. That's, a, that's what that's called an uh, a outlier. Mm-hmm. It's an externality. Mm-hmm. It's an it's a aberration. It's not the typical story. Yeah. The typical story is a story of constant discipline and work right right some people are lucky circumstantially um life gives them a set of um things that make it work out for them quicker mm-hmm. but what actually is the is the, the root for most people is a route through discipline and trial and failure mm-hmm. right so what you need to even if you're if, if you are really thinking about i want to achieve something the discipline is what you need to habits Right. You need to create habits that, that reinforce the things that you need to do. Mm-hmm. But what most people hear is, are you passionate about this? Mm-hmm. I can't tell you. There are many days that I'm not passionate about nothing that I am doing. <laughs> right? If, if, if passion is what I need yeah. to get me to do what I need to do, like forget about it. Yeah, yeah. What gets me through those days is discipline. Mm-hmm. It's saying, okay, Javet. This is the commitment that you have made to yourself. This is the work that you have put in over the years. This is the routine that you have put in all of the, over the years. Mm-hmm. Get up and do what you're supposed to do. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Create situations in your life that nudges you to action. That's what I do, you know. So everybody has their productivity, especially now. Everybody says, oh, you're working from home. You have these productivity mm-hmm. hacks and all of mm-hmm. those things. Mm-hmm. What I do is nudge myself into work. Mm-hmm. Right? For, this is me. Because... The fact is, and how I do that is through my habits that I've created. That it, it gives me discipline. Right. Right? It, those habits give me discipline. Yeah. So I am productive because I have nudged myself into work. Not because I'm passionate every day. Right. <laughs> Some days I am not. Right. So if you are in, your, in a lull, you have to ask yourself, what do I need to change to nudge myself into movement? Mm-hmm. Right? Sometimes it's systems that you have to put in place, whether that is... Um, setting uh, reminders or people who hold you accountable. Mm-hmm. Um, so, for example, I, I, I've run a consulting business for 10 years. Mm-hmm. So, fortunately, I have a, a good team. My team nudges me into action. Mm-hmm. My operations person will call me and say, Javet, um, XYZ, those mm-hmm. things nudge me into action. So, whether it's through the, your systems that you put in place, we use a lot of software mm-hmm. um, to say, hey, milestone missing, this missing, we, we use those things. But my, my lifestyle also nudges me into action. Mm-hmm. Um, meaning, I do, I do less of the things that distract me and make sure that I don't, I am up when I need to be up in the morning. Yeah. 
I make adjustments to my diet to ensure that I'm not lethargic, that I'm that I'm always full of energy and can go, can execute. Mm -hmm. So if you're in a lull, the first thing you need to figure out is what do I need to change? After you figure out what do I need to change, you figure out if these habits are actually things that you can sustain, mm -hmm. right? So for some people, every New Year, they say, oh, I'm going to the gym, <laughs> right? But do you is that really what you should be doing? Mm -hmm. You have never exercised. Yeah. Is the gym your first choice? Uh -huh. Not to walk 10 minutes? Mm -hmm. Like, honestly, yeah, seriously. Yeah, yeah. If you're really serious about your exercise routine because you want to be healthier, the gym is not the first place you should go. You should walk for 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. Every day. Every day. Right. And then after you start walk for 10 minutes, now you start build up this habit of actually doing this thing. Right. You, 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 you go to somewhere else. Mm -hmm. You do something else. Um, but most people try to make these big leaps that are not, they, they can't fit in their routine. Mm -hmm. You don't, you, you know that you sleep, you, you sleep six hours a night because you watch five hours of Netflix. Mm -hmm. But you want to get up at six o'clock and go to the gym. It ain't going to happen. <laughs> right? So what you need to do is make small adjustments. Yeah. Create habits that you can actually sustain. This can be a part of my life. I can do this forever. Right? These kind of, so, but you have to be committed to the change too. You can't, you can't stay the same and expect to be different, which is a lot of people have this, this thing. Oh, I want to stay the same, but I also want to be different. I want to be rich, but I don't want to do the things that rich people do. How do you think they get rich and stay rich? Or I want to create wonderful music, but I don't want to do the things that people who create wonderful music do. Or I want to paint a masterpiece, but I don't want to do the things that people who create masterpieces do. It not connect. The fact is, if you, if you really want to go somewhere, you want to build rockets, you have to find a rocket scientist and say, rocket scientist, how you build your rocket? And then you find the space, you know yourself. Mm -hmm. You find the elements in yourself that feeds into this space and then innovate. But you have to inculcate some habits that the people who are building rockets um, have. have. Yeah. Yeah, you can't just get up and say, yo, more and build rocket, you know. Rocket to the moon. And <laughs> but but you're not doing... Yeah. So what a lot of people miss is the need for change. Yeah. You need to change. Yeah. I have a good friend, um, Dwight Campbell, who always... Like, he has been my friend for since I was in high school. And the one thing Dwight always said to me is, even back then, Javed, if you can't change your mind, you can't change nothing. <laughs> Follow me. Mm -hmm. If you can't change your mm -hmm. own mind, mind. Yeah. How, what else are you going to expect to change? Yeah. You can't convince yourself mm -hmm. to spend some time working on yourself, but you want to convince somebody else? And try to convince them to even give you money. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you can't convince yourself to incorporate some discipline yeah. in the work. Yeah. But you want to and it, it has always um, stayed with me. So, you know, the first person I try to convince when I try any new project is myself. Javed, this is going to require some discipline. Mm -hmm. It's going to require some change. Are you willing to make that change? Yeah. No, no wrong with not being willing to make the change, you know. If it's a no, it's a no. It's a no, it's a no. <laughs> right. And, and, I, and I want to make a little stick up in right here so and say to a lot of people, don't think because this is the fad that you have to do it. Mm -hmm. Don't think because everybody is trying to be an influencer, you need to be an influencer. Right? Don't think because you see this guy who does paintings has this amazing page that he's creating on Instagram, you need to go down that road. No, Bridget. There are other ways to do it. Mm -hmm. You might find that your style is a little bit more reserved. Mm -hmm. You might find that you want to, to, to cultivate a more curated clientele mm -hmm. where you have these 15 or 10 people who you are cur creating things for just them. Mm -hmm. you, want, you might be want to be exclusive. You might want to be mass market. Right. <laughs> right? right. So you have to ask those things. If, you're, if your personality don't lend it, itself to certain things, then you have to speak to yourself. Mm -hmm. You have to, st as, as, as Zinzi Samuel uh, wrote something on my page, stepping into your, your ownness. Yeah. You have to step into your ownness. Yeah. yeah. And I love that. Step yeah. into your ownness. Big up Zinzi. <laughs> yeah. yeah, step into your ownness. Because uh, some of us step into the otherness. We are trying to be other people. Mm. You are trying to have this 10,000 follower. You are trying to create this business where look flashy. 
Well, but if you actually stayed and paid attention to the one thousand you have, you might you have realized you have some more value there. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So the fact is, getting out of the lull, and I know <laughs> as, as, as kind of, but, but really, it's a commitment to change first. First. Secondly, motivation ain't going to make you win the race. Motivation will get you out of bed, mm -hmm. but it not going. It's discipline going to make you win. Yeah. Discipline going to make you win. Motivation is just the first part. Motivation is like seeing a girl like, or a guy that you like and looking at them and giving them a smile. Mm -hmm. You actually have to walk over to them <laughs> and say, hello, I yeah. am such and such. Right. Right? If you know the walkover part, <laughs> it's a, it was just a, a nice moment. Yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's a nice moment in time. Yeah. But it's not really going to do anything. Yeah. Because you haven't backed it up with action. 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 I was listening to something the other day and um, the dude said that a lot of times we put ourselves in situations that we we live in this moment of tension. Yeah. And we put ourselves under pressure. Yeah. But his explanation for it is that pressure is a fallacy. Pressure is self-inflicted. Yeah. He's basically saying that there's no such thing. Right, right. Because if you, whatever you think is difficult, whatever you think is strenuous, whatever you think is this, oh my God, I cannot do this. If you put yourself in a state of preparedness, then pressure is almost, yeah. is almost relieved. It's a very stoic um, thought. And I like, I like the thought and I, I endorse the thought. But here is how I look at it. Mm -hmm. You're only under pressure. For, for, for me, you're only under pressure if you are choosing to give attention to things that are outside of your control. True. Yeah, that, is, that is the thing, you know. So, if you, for example, a lot of people now are depressed because of COVID. Mm -hmm. Right? Rightfully so. It's a displacement. It's tough mentally. Mm -hmm. Like, it's, it's a lot that to deal with. It's a lot to with. deal with, yeah. It's a big shift for a lot of people. But... Have they stepped back and asked themselves, what can I control? Mm -hmm. You can't control the COVID rate. We have a situation where you're not a doctor and you're a painter. You, you, you should be in the carpet country painting. But you are spending time worrying about the latest press conference coming out of the WHO and what are they saying. That is not your job, Regin. Mm -hmm. What can you... Are you, are you, do, are you interested in... Are you doing that kind of work? Right. Right? Why are you giving energy to that? You cannot, you are not able to affect that outcome. You are not able to do, allow, if you are in that um, spare, you know, you would have been so focused on the work that you are needed. If you were a, a vaccine developer, you'd be so focused on the work of developing the vaccine. You don't have no time to think about stressing out. Mm -hmm. You have the fact that you have work to do. So as you, as a painter or a musician, or whatever. Not that you shouldn't pay attention to your environment around you, know, but what can you do to affect the environment? Maybe the work that you can do to affect the environment is express your art. Mm -hmm. Not worry about what WHO release says this morning. Mm -hmm. The amount of people who I speak to who are so caught up in things that they cannot control. You have no control over um, certain aspects of the Jamaican economy, the exchange rate, whatever, whatever. What you have control over your personal excellence, mm -hmm. your personal focus. You have no control over many things in life. The stress that you're putting on yourself is because you are giving presence to things that are outside your control. Mm -hmm. Because if they were within your control, what you would have done is acted. Mm -hmm. right? if, you, if you could have vaccinated the world, and that was in your control, he would have asked, he'd have do it. Right. So, first of all, we have to ask ourselves, what is inside? What is in our bubble? Yeah. There's many things that are not in your bubble, you know? Yeah. And you cannot fix it. You don't have any money, your car broke down. Can you fix it? Yourself? No. Do you have money to fix it? No. Mm. Okay. You can't fix yourself and you don't have money to fix it. What am I sitting down worrying about? Those two things... How is it going to affect the outcome of the car not being, being able to be fixed? It's out of my control. What do I have in my control? I am working on this project that potentially, when it is finished, will put me in a better financial position. And that me can control. 
me can get up, me can reduce my expenses, me can decide to cook at home. That is within my control. Mm -hmm. So I'm in a better financial position. Um, the, we, a stress comes from people trying to control things that they can't control. Yeah. There are many things that we cannot control. When it comes down to stress and tension, that is what drives stress and tension. People trying to act outside of themselves. Right. And figure things out um, which are independent of their own actions. You, 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 as far as I'm concerned, can I do something about it? If the answer to it is no, <laughs> move on, Bridget. Yeah. Move on. Yeah. Do Figure out what you can do something about. Figure uh, out what you can and do something about. Moving into another area, another adage. You'll never lead by fitting in. Yeah. And uh, tying into the first episode with, with, with Randy, um, betting on yourself. Mm -hmm. When you started Point Global, yeah. I'm sure that most persons were curious mm -hmm. slash concerned mm -hmm. <laughs> about your creative journey mm -hmm. and what that journey would have looked like, but you pressed on nevertheless yeah. because your aim and intention wasn't to try and fit in with what everyone else was doing, i.e. maybe getting a job, sticking with a job and working through and, you know, trying to move through the different um, ranks. Yeah. Your passion was driven by your leadership skills, yeah. if you will. Yeah. Persons still are trying to follow the crowd. Right. Um, despite all indications that crowd crowd not necessarily get you where you want to go. So, but so. what what's what's your what's your take on, you know, just facilitating a new line of thinking mm -hmm. around leadership but being your own you know, as in yeah, said, yeah. stepping into your ownness. Yeah. So I want I want to unpack that a little bit. <laughs> Because it's a very complex issue. Mm -hmm. um, the reality is that there are many people in the world with many different talents, mm -hmm. right? Um, and some people, some people are more forceful than others um, about stepping into what they want to do. Yeah, which is not nothing is, is wrong with that. Some people are great collaborators and connectors. Some people are, are guardians. Mm -hmm. They are able to protect something when it is built. Mm -hmm. um, so everybody has, everybody has a space that, they, that represents the best of how they like working. Yeah. Um, so one of the things that is important, it, that's why self-development is so important. Because what happens with self-development is you get a bit... And, and let me unpack self-development. Self-development is trying to constantly improve yourself and who you are mm -hmm. and the things that speak to you, your craft, your, your values. Yeah. It's important because it arrives at you having a better understanding of what are the things that, are, that speak to me. Yeah. What are the things that are important to me? What are the things that drive me? Um, Point Global in two days will be 10 years old. Mm -hmm. But I remember, and now looking back, now where I am right now, <laughs> there was I have never made a better decision in life. Not only because of everything that is happening with the economy and COVID and all of that, but I've been rewarded in that 10 years for, for making the step. Mm -hmm. But to get to that step, it wasn't easy. Mm -hmm. But what I started with is knowing that even though where I was, and at the time I was, when I started Point Global, I, I, I was in my early 20s. Mm -hmm. I had a seemingly a good job. I was head of marketing and exports market. I was in the C-suite with people who were 20, um, 30, sometimes 40 years my senior, mm -hmm. learning from their experiences. So I had to, I, I, that was a tremendous place to be for me. Um, and I had to ask myself, what was the trade-off between being able to sit in that room for the next 10 years and learning from those people are exploring something but uh, that at the time was new and different. Mm -hmm. When I started Point Global um, and I went into a room and said, we did digital marketing, most marketing managers look at me like, what's that? What, what is, are you, like, you build a website. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, <laughs> right? Um, the understanding of what it was, was, I was coming back from working in the U.S., mm -hmm. Um, for a company that largely marketed their services online. Right. Jamaican businesses weren't doing that. There were some Jamaican businesses that had a website, right? The, many, actually. Mm -hmm. had a, they have a website, but it's 
is nowhere near interactive. You never had the, the fancy use of like UI and UX design mm. and stuff like that. It was it was some of them were a page. Yeah, page. Yeah. It's like a brochure that ends up put online. Right. So I remember and I worked for um and I came back to Jamaica, I started work for a pretty innovative company. Mm -hmm. Um I worked for a company that really was using IT in an innovative way in Jamaica. I worked for MCIS Advance that was doing expense card management that was using technology and point of sale machines and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, and then I transitioned to a manufacturing company that was also um, pretty radical because it was started by a Jamaican innovator in Doreen Frankson. She was head of the Manufacturers Association of Jamaica. She was a, she was a, a leader. She was a strong leader. I had to ask myself, do I, when I, when I, when I, do I want to say and work and learn from these people? And the, the key to, 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 to that is I kept being pulled into saying, hey, there's this new thing that it was never felt new to me. Right. Because I was, I was working in it. I was studying. I was seeing the trends. Mm -hmm. I was reading. But to everybody else, it's new. Right. So in my head, this was like, this is the future. Right. This is, this is like we're going to have a situation where we're going to increasingly be using digital we're going to have a situation where people who have developed digital skills mm. are going to be at the top of the food chain. Right. This is just where the world, software is going to eventually eat the world. Mm. Right? And I was saying that, but in my, in my place, even my friends who I went to school with, they weren't seeing that. Mm -hmm. They were they, they weren't, they, for some reason, that wasn't, that never occurred to them fully. So even my friends where I went to and said, yo, come join me with, me with this now. Can we do this together now? Mm -hmm. they, some of them were convinced. Some people saw it, but they never had the, the tenacity to do it consistently. Mm -hmm. Some people say, yeah, and they were gave, gave me encouraging advice, but they never... So they're, they're going to... If you, are passion, if you really believe in something, you have to recognize that you might be in a position where you are able to see a version of the future that people even close to you can't see. Can't see. As our Jamaican elders would say, sorry for cut you. But this is where we conclude part one of this conversation. And it has been an exciting conversation so far. So definitely, guys, set your reminders. Next week, we're back with the conclusion of this exciting conversation with Mr. Javit Nixon. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Blank Canvas. Go out there and be creative. And see you next week. Bye.